All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Join me today along my journey of replacing a rear caliper on a 2010 Ford Explorer, but this process will work for any Explorer 2002 to 2010 because I believe all of the rear calipers are the same. So for this job, all you're gonna need is a 19 millimeter to get the tire off, a 10 millimeter, a 14 millimeter, and a C-clamp, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So first, I'm just gonna get the tire off. Okay, so we have to compress the piston on our caliper in order to get it off the rotor. So I use a C-clamp. They actually make tools specifically for this job if you want to uh, check out the link in the description below, but the C-clamp works just as good. So we're gonna push that in. Perfect. Now you can see, look, it's like super loose. And then in the back here, we have a 10 millimeter a 10 millimeter. I'm going to get those off now. Now you can take out the top bolt, but we're going to leave the bottom bolt in because we're going to be undoing the 14 millimeter. And when you're trying to crack it loose, you don't want the caliper to swing off. So I get my first bolt out, keep that off to the side. Like I said, we'll loosen but not remove our second bolt. And then behind it, we'll undo the 14 millimeter bolt and get our hose off. All right, now you're going to have fluid dribble out. So you got to make sure you have your drain pan underneath it ready to start catching the brake fluid. Brake fluid is highly corrosive and eats through absolutely everything. So try not to get it on your paint. All right, now we can remove the other 10 millimeter bolt, get our caliper off. Perfect, let some brake fluid drain out a little bit. All right, now we can slip our pads onto our new caliper and get our caliper up against the knuckle. All right, so I got my pads and my new to me caliper. Get our caliper on. Now we can start in our 10 millimeter bolts. I'll leave the torque spec in the description below for, but for other people who don't have a torque wrench, good and tight is the torque spec on this. Now, like I said before, I have to get my crush washer off of this. There we go. This is so hard, was it? I got my banjo bolt with my new crush washers. I'll leave the link in the description below of the part numbers of the crush washers. You always want to get new ones. They're made of copper and like drain plugs, they're relatively one time use. And once again, when I torque these down, there's really no number. It's a crush washer, so you just got to go by feel. So you go nice and tight and you'll just kind of be like, you, you just have that spidey sense where you're like, yeah, that's good. So I just reached to that point. Clip our harness back into the hose. And then now I'm going to show you how I do my one man army from Modern Warfare 2 with the self brake bleeding procedure. All right, so here's the deal I use a Snapple bottle, and I've been using it for so long that the Snapple bottle is still glass. So you fill it a third of the way with brake fluid. You submerge a hose with the same ID as the bleeder screw itself. You put the hose over the bleeder screw. You make sure the hose is higher than the bleeder screw because the air will come to the top. And then you can very simply go into the car, turn the ignition on, don't start the engine, and just start pumping the fluid out. And that's how you do it by yourself. Now make sure you keep an eye on the master cylinder. Add fluid if you have to. You don't want it getting too low. Oh yeah, see that? See the fluid coming out? I like that. All right, everybody, that's pretty much it. So once you see that the bubbles stop coming out, you're good to go. I can tighten this bleeder down and we pull our hose off and that's, that's it. That's how you do it by yourself without needing someone to pump the brakes. Okay, pump the brakes. Okay, this method is just easier. I'm gonna go to Walmart and get some fluid. I'm gonna bleed the brakes out. I'm not happy with what the condition of the fluid looks like in the master. It doesn't look like it's ever been done. So I'm gonna go bulk up on dot three and I'll be back to do the other side. All right, I'm gonna speed run this side. Let's see how long uh, it takes me. Okay, someone's messaging me. Oh, great. 
him again. I appreciate when you guys ask me questions, but I will say I'm not available all day, every day to answer every question. Like, I'm not being mean. It's just, I, I'm only human. If you haven't joined already, be sure to check out my Facebook group, Ford 4.0 liter sock V6 owners club, where a lot of people, 1.8 thousand members now, a lot of people join, a lot of people help each other out. He hears me talking outside and he thinks like, I can come in and let him play right now. The wind is really like, not conducive for recording today. I'd almost be able to fool you and tell you these calipers were new, huh? Guess what? New to me. It's in. Top hooks in. Bottom. <laughs> nice. Okay, two bolts. This truck has become the designated road trip mobile. That's some real good rain now, huh? All right, well, once again, I get the one-man army. Got the bleeder loose, got the hose up into the Snapple bottle with the fluid in it. Master, I uh, put more fluid in. I'm gonna pump the pedal 10 times. Then it should be good to go. That's a lot of rain. All right, that was 20. So at that point, we're pretty much good. I'm gonna keep doing it until the fluid comes clear though. All right, so I got my calipers on, took it for a ride. Everything is smooth, no issues whatsoever. Truck is driving, fantastic. Just a little vlog type video showing you what I do in a day of the life. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.